Welcome to Haunted Talks, the official podcast of The Haunted Walk, offering ghost tours and paranormal adventures in Kingston, Ottawa, and Toronto, Ontario, and online experiences to anyone in this mortal realm. My name is Jim Dean. I am the creative director, and thank you for joining us for this episode. In the show, we will be speaking with Elliot and Corey, two members of the Phantoms of Yore Paranormal Investigation Team. We've been collaborating with them for five years on public investigations at haunted historic sites in Ontario. These events have become extremely popular as they are so well-run and unique, one-of-a-kind adventures. They will be sharing with us some of their experiences and their philosophy in conducting and leading these investigations. They've also brought some really eerie EVPs or audio anomalies that they or their participants have captured at these historic sites. If you want the creepiest experience possible, I would suggest listening to that section with a pair of headphones. But don't blame me if you get a little freaked out. You're going to have to hear some of them to believe them. But before we get to that, March break is coming up here in Ontario, and if you are looking for some spine-tingling fun, we'd like to invite you and yours to come out and join us on a ghost tour in Toronto, Ottawa, or Kingston. We have public tours running most nights in all three cities, and if you'd like to bring a group for your own private tour, we can set that up for you as well. For our listeners a little further away who want to get in on the spooky fun, we have our Haunting at Home online paranormal adventure, which is mentioned in the episode, as well as our library of virtual haunted campfires, featuring some of the best ghost storytellers in the world. This March, we hope you can join us in person or virtually as we explore the supernatural. Tickets and information for all of our experiences can be found on our website, hauntedwalk.com. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all at Haunted Walk, for our latest news and updates. We hope you will take the opportunity to follow, rate, and review the show wherever you listen. We had a really nice review come in this past week on Apple Podcasts from Ontario, Canada, 1012, who wrote that our last show, Hospital Exorcisms, with Dr. Paul Blair was an absolutely fascinating interview and incredibly informative. We thank you so much for that. And if you have not listened to that episode yet, be sure to check it out as it is one of the most powerful interviews we have ever conducted. Finally, please be sure to recommend Haunted Talks to anyone you know who is interested in the paranormal to help us grow our spooky community and especially to those who are afraid of the things that go bump in the night. It's my pleasure to welcome some guests you have often heard me mention, but I believe this marks their first appearance on the show. Joining us are two members from Phantoms of Yore who team up with us to run public paranormal investigations at some incredible historic sites, mostly in Eastern Ontario. Elliot and Corey, welcome to Haunted Talks. Thanks, Jim. Happy to be here. Elliot, as a co-founder, I'd like to start with you. When you started Phantoms in 2018, what were your motivations? What were you trying to achieve? Can you give us a little bit of the backstory of how you got started? 
the idea was to step away from the typical normal paranormal team logistics. I wanted to assist historical sites and at the same time experience them and open them up to the public. So Eric Oikel, my partner, we used to work together in corrections and we would work late evening shifts. And there's nothing to do sometimes. So together we would watch paranormal you know, YouTube videos, and we're both interested in the subject. And, you know, we planned out, you know, these trips. One day we'll go on a road trip and check out all these places. Um, ten years go by, and um, after some experiences of my own with other teams, I contacted him and said, hey, I got an idea. You want to start it with me? And that's how the Phantoms of York begun. And as a follow-up to that, I'm curious how the historic sites respond when you reach out to them, you know, and indicate either you'd like to do a, a private investigation or hold a larger public event. How do they respond? And have you noticed since you've started any change in kind of their attitude? Well, Jim, you were present for our first pitch at the Ottawa jail hostel back in 2018. And we held our first event there, which was much different than the way we do it today. It was more of feeling out what would work best after we offer people the best experience, their own private investigative experience. And we learned a lot from that one event. And from there, it just kind of shaped forward to 2023 today. Corey, almost every investigation team has their own unique style or approach that they use. What is Phantom's philosophy or perspective on conducting investigations? Well, I think, um, you know, as a team, you know, you don't, you don't believe everything that you hear or see. Uh, I think Elliot does uh, a lot of research behind the sites and we try to use, you know, use that as a, as a driving factor to the, you know, the questioning or the method of, of investigating that site. And, uh, you know, try to concrete the history and, and uh, evidence that, uh, you know, other teams have found or um, allegations that may have come up in the past. How are you different from other teams? What is it specifically we might get at a Phantoms event that we might not with other teams? So the Phantoms of you are the idea is more community based. So it's not a team of me, Corey, Eric, Aaron, Josh. You know, it's everybody. We all work together to experience the paranormal, and everybody wants that experience. And where better to get that experience than in some of Ontario's most haunted locations? You show up, we greet you, we tell you the history, we explain the equipment, and we give it to you. This is for you. You're going to film tonight, you're going to use a K2, you're going to use a spirit box, you're going to use a REM pod, you're going to bring it with you. And you are going to have your own experience with that group of six or eight that you're with in the dark by yourselves with us checking in once in a while to make sure you're good. But we always explain to them, you're investigating without facilitation. This is your investigation. You're free to do it the way you believe is right. There's many different philosophies on how to investigate. And we kind of have a no judgment zone. You do it the way you feel is right. You know, they're all influenced by television. And every television show does it differently. You do it the way you want to do it. And we'll help you to do it if you need the help. So this is an opportunity. And a lot of people coming out to the investigations don't realize that. And when they do realize that, they're holding the infrared camera. They're holding the equipment. And we're not going to be supervising them the entire time. They get super excited. Because that's what they want to do. They want to experience their own paranormal investigation, to have their own experience to bring home with them. And many people have been influenced to start their own teams, start organizing. A lot of like-minded people have met at the events, at the public investigations. So the Phantoms of yours more community. Anyone coming to an, an event is part of that community. All of our partners are part of that community. Jim, you're part of that community, right? We want the same thing as the investigators who come out. We want experiences. And that's why we go out and do investigations the way we do it as well. You mentioned there the consideration of time. And one of the things I think is fantastic about your experiences 
is how long they run. Because what we know from our ghost tours is people love to spend time in haunted sites. And you think about some of the really big paranormal investigation sites, particularly in the States, where they just churn people through at a really quick rate. It can often feel very rushed. I know you give people a lot of time. I believe some of them even go three, four hours. From an investigation perspective, why is having the experience that long so important? It takes time to get any type of intelligent response from spirit, if spirit does exist. Um, you know, we will sit in, uh, for hours in haunted locations waiting for something to happen. And it takes a long time until something could happen. It may not happen. You may get nothing. We have groups coming in to investigate that get all sorts of stuff, and then the group right after them get nothing. It's really a gamble when it comes to the paranormal. And honestly, most people think there's not enough time by the end of it. They don't want to leave because time goes by so quickly. It's rare that we have somebody that has absolutely no experience. It's all in the, in the review. Just because you don't have an immediate experience does not mean that in your footage there isn't something you can't explain. Whether it's a shadow figure, electronic voice phenomenon, light anomalies. I bet you for everybody's footage, if I took the two and a half hours to review all their investigation footage, I'd probably find a dozen anomalies. Corey, Elliot mentioned the footage that the participants shoot themselves. And another really awesome aspect, I think, of your experiences has to do with the technology that you use. You have the participants, each with their own their own camera. You have static live cameras set up, which you stream live across the internet to kind of bring in uh, an external audience and another other sets of eyes and ears to to keep an eye on things that are going on. And I know you also work on some of your own your own tech yourself involved in the investigation. I wonder if you could talk to us about the role technology plays in particular in these experiences, and I guess in the ultimate quest to understand the paranormal. A lot of it's old technology being used in new ways. Um, you know, like the REM devices that, that you see out there, you know, they use an older technology uh, that, you know, that, that creates a an electromagnetic bubble around it that you break and it create you know, it creates funky sounds and stuff like that. It's more proximity. The, the stronger the signal, the more the lights start flashing. A lot of this, you know, a lot of the technology is meant to be interactive and, and trigger spirit activity is energy based. And that, you know, and that's that's what a lot of the tech is, is based off. People are coming up with new ways to use the technology. Uh, you know, there's a lot of music boxes being created now and lights that are triggered by EMF in different patterns and so I'm not creating anything new. I just I just like to make a version of you know save you know my version of of what's out there, and it's incredibly expensive to buy the equipment um, through the state. So if we can make it here, uh, you know, at a fraction of the price, well, why wouldn't we? And I just enjoy tinkering with it and figuring out different ways of doing the same thing. It's a, a rabbit hole that you get lost in a lot of times. And is there a certain piece of technology or an investigative tool that has been really generating surprising results, I guess, for yourselves or, or for the guests on the investigation? Well, to be honest, uh, and, and Ellie, you can correct me, but I mean, when we first started investigations, the REM pods uh, or the REM devices were, were not, uh, you know, they weren't active at all. But But recently, you know, we've had a lot of, I'd like to say intelligent responses from, from our REM devices. Um, you know, as we're walking by rooms, they start going off and then we'll, when we approach the room, you know, they stop and, you know, you, you, you we'd have whole conversations with, with a, with a device sitting on a, <laughs> a display case. And, and, you know, we've been getting intelligent, you know, what seems to be intelligent responses from them. Whereas, you know, that piece of technology wasn't really active in, in the first, you know, couple of years of our investigation. So it's just, we, it, maybe it's just a, we're learning to use it a little differently or interact with them a little differently. I don't know, but uh, 
but that's the one that seems to get a lot of our activity recently uh, along with uh, you know there's always the popular ovulus which you know is a database of words that you know reads a bunch of environmental variables and and you know uh, every combination of of the three or four variables um will line up with a word and the idea is that it gets manipulated you know can be manipulated to choose the word by manipulating the environment around it that's you know people are always looking for that so you know that's as far as popularity goes that's one of the most popular ones another question elliot i'm curious about is who joins you on these investigations who becomes part of the phantoms community is there a certain kind of person i mean you would assume an interest in the paranormal but other than that do you see any any commonality between the types of people who are really interested in, in having these kind of experiences uh, it, it changes from year to year. I mean, the, the demographic that comes out to the public investigations, I mean, lately we've been seeing a lot of Sam and Colby fans, so a lot of youth, you know, whereas we would never see youth before. But now because of that influence, we're seeing a lot of youth who want to do what Sam and Colby do. So they come and we know right away and we call it out. We look at them, we say, Sam and Colby. And they're like, yeah. Teenagers wanting to experience that stuff. And most of the time they come with their moms and their family and they all have a good time together. Um, so it, it depends. It changes from year to year. Um, you know, we do have our hard, hardcore following that have been following us since 2018 that pretty much come to everything that we do or anything new that we do. And we know who they are. And, uh, you know, they're very respected by us for sticking out with us so long and coming out so often. And we do take on people. We invite people from the Phantom community if we see that they're they're very dedicated and very skilled um, and serious about investigating. When we set up private stuff, uh, we will invite them. Say, "Hey, are you interested in joining us?" Corey came to one of our events in Gananoque back in 2018. That's how we met Corey. Of course, I think our listeners are very curious to hear about some of the experiences you and the participants have had during these investigations. And I understand you brought some clips for us to dig into of strange and eerie things that people have captured at these historic sites. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I would love to stick to our kind of our, our three, you know, most busy sites. So the Millican Tell, it's a wonderful site. It, it's very little known for the spiritual activity that's happened there between William Lyon Mackenzie King and Sir Robert Borden. So there's a lot of history. In the 1970s, the Ottawa Journal covered the story about the renovation workers there who were fetching it up to be the museum and how they experienced their tools moving and they heard voices and they called it the ghost of Ethel. And Ethel McKenzie was the wife to Robert Tate McKenzie, um, the artist and the person responsible to why we have physical education in schools today. So when you come out, you learn about all this history. But it is quite active with, you know, interesting anomalies. And it's a place that I personally love. So we have something called the Legba Link Box. And this is a souped up spirit box. So it uses guitar pedals to remove the white noise. The and it uses reverb to try to make the voices more clear. So it's different than your typical spirit box which runs through radio frequencies. It does do that, but it cleans it up so it's a little bit more audible. And I think I have uh, one of Ethel saying goodbye to one of the guests. Goodbye, Ethel. We'll play one more time. Goodbye, Ethel. It does sound like goodbye, doesn't it? What? You know, when you get these kinds of clips, like how do the guests respond? Are are most of them really excited that they've they've heard? Or, or I understand they may review the footage later and see it there, but when they discover or hear something like this, are most people excited, or do some people get more scared or terrified? Uh, it, it's all of the above. I mean, it's just like if you can think about your family and friends and how they would all react. They all have their own unique response to everything. It's like we have no idea. I mean, we'll see it when it happens, but everybody has a unique reaction. There's no real consistent line where everybody reacts the same way. You know, some people are runners. Some people are streamers. Some people are just silent. It really depends. It just depends and, and some on people, that's the moment they get hooked. Yeah. I bet. 
you know, once you have one of those experiences, it particularly if you were a little skeptical before, I got to think that opens a it opens a Pandora's box, so to speak. What else do you have from, from Mill of Kintail, which is just outside of of uh, Ottawa, for our our international and, and national listeners with connections to former Canadian prime ministers? You mentioned William Lyon Mackenzie King, who is who had a deep interest in spiritualism, and, and Robert Borden as well. Any other interesting captures from there? Well, I should give you an EVP sample. I think uh, this is me sitting by myself in Ethel's room, and I get a get out EVP. So we'll see if you guys can uh, can hear that. So I'm sitting by myself in Ethel's room. Are you upstairs? Well, yeah, when you slow that down a little bit, that's really clear. The female, get out. Get out. What do you make of that? Or, I mean... Well, I mean, and unfortunately, at this time, the Legba link was running, but you can tell a difference between a voice and a radio frequency voice or something coming through that portal box because of the reverb. There was no reverb in that. That was just a whisper of a get out. Close to the mic, too. It, yeah, it was very close that, to hear yeah. that, that whisper. Yeah. Now, the best one, that I'll just have to play this quick before we move on to another site, but this one just makes us laugh because it's a voice that we can match to any one of us out here, and it's this deep voice, male voice, that says, don't come back here, bro. And none of us talk like that, so we have no idea who the <laughs> hell is, is saying this, which is super, super interesting. So It's not, it's not even the right air. Like, it's not even the right air. Like, I, I we, we uh, it just makes me laugh every time. Oh, we... oh yeah, just, just none of us say, yeah. bro, this is not something we say. Yeah. And we want to say, don't come back here, bro, in, in the middle of the yeah. tale. That's very clear. Yeah, don't come back here, bro. It, it kind of raises a, a very core question about the paranormal, I think, which is are ghosts necessarily connected to a place you know because normally we think about it and we often see correlating evidence about a haunting related to something that happened at the site but that's certainly not always the case and a voice here that seems a little bit out of place as well do you have any thoughts on that as to like it's a question we ask all the time are locations haunted or are people haunted People, I mean, something that we experience a lot is family members coming through. So you're coming to a public investigation, the spirits around you realize, hey, they're going ghost hunting. Here's an opportunity to make contact. And we've had many people who have had personal experiences through the devices that, you know, for one, you know, a grandfather came through, Papa. You know, other people, EVPs, they're like, that sounds just like my father. Um, psychic mediums who watch the live feeds when we're doing the public investigations we'll have people come to us crying because they say how does this person know this about my family we don't publicate their names they're not out there they're just people on a screen that these mediums are watching and they're picking up on the family members around them so we actually warn people about this before they come through saying look this can happen mediums watch you know, they can make a comment that may be related to a family member. Sometimes people experience loved ones coming through. It can happen. And, and this is the kind of thing that makes me endlessly fascinated with the paranormal. Because what we're saying then is the idea of intentionality, that I'm going to open myself up to communicate, even just for one night when I'm out with phantoms, suddenly allows a lot of different things to occur. And this is something we explored with our haunting at home uh, online paranormal adventure, which is the same, kind of based on the same principle. It's like, we all may be more haunted, whatever that means, than we think. We just, so many of us don't don't look and explore that avenue. Well, yeah, that, that, that's exactly. It's like Cornwall Jail, where, 
you know, you have a critic there who works in the courthouse. Oh, I don't believe in that stuff. He walks through the jail at night, never experiences anything. But then you got other people who are too afraid to step foot because of the things they have experienced in there. If you're closed off to it, you're not going to, you're not going to have those experiences. And when you're live streaming, I know that you can get a lot, particularly on Facebook, a lot of comments of people hearing or seeing things. Is that impression correct? I mean, what, what kind of role does the at home observer of the live feeds play in the investigation? So they'll talk about orbs, but then orbs are mostly moisture, dust, or you know, debris in the air going by the lens or illuminated by the infrared light. But sometimes you do get some pretty strange light anomalies or shadow figures and also voices. I mean, we have left live feeds running at the sites overnight when nobody's there just to see if anything happens after an event before the next event. And we'll let that run all night long until, you know, four in the morning, five in the morning. played that with Kintail. The lights. Oh, yeah, the lights. Yeah, so Kintail, the lights turn on, and we've caught that on overnight live feeds and stuff like that, and footsteps. You can hear the click of the old, like it's an old push button. You hear the click, and the light comes on. We, We were the only ones that had the keys, and we weren't there. (laughs) <laughs> now I'm very eager to see the rest. Where uh, where are we going uh, for our next stop? Well, we'll go to Cornwall because we do a lot of work with Cornwall. They've been great partners with us. Um, it's just one of those locations everybody knows about in Ontario. is featured on Ghost Hunters on Creepy Canada. You know, so it's just one of those I want to investigate that place type of locations. And this is the the SDD Jail in Cornwall, Ontario. So it was built in 1833. The original jail was built there in 1803, which was used as a barracks in the War of 1812. So there's a whole ton of history there. They estimate there's, someone told me 200 bodies on the property, I, maybe less. But as we know with the Ottawa Jail Hostel, what happened when they went to renovate the Mackenzie King Bridge? What did they come across? You know, a lot bodies. Of bodies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we really don't know because back then, if you had an unclaimed body at a jail, what did they do? put you in the courtyard because they weren't going to cough up the cash to put you in a graveyard put you unmarked in the ground so i'm trying to see if i got any like really good creepy ones because i know people want to be creeped out here play i'll play one of my favorite ones uh it's saddening because it's a plea but i thought this evp was amazing and this was from a uh, public investigator and it's god please help me mr place in the tunnel and when they build that tunnel, they also remove several bodies. Let's see if you hear God, please help. Yeah, the God is particularly pronounced um jim i want your opinion on this just this one for me is the most wildest capture ever so that hallway is the way the offender would go to court they would go up the spiral staircase enter court okay so this was caught right at the end of the hallway right by the spiral staircase and the public investigators did not mention this voice at all and it's so out of the ordinary that I'm just like, this is somebody's radio saying jury secured. A straight up walkie talkie saying jury secured, which is extremely interesting because before an offender would come up, that's something they would say, the jury secured. You can send them up now. So have a listen and just let, let me know if you think this is a walkie talkie. <laughs> I see what you mean. It's that that tinny kind of quality, like a a walkie-talkie speaker. And again, the context is absolutely appropriate and bang on. And the group, you said the group didn't hear this in person. This was only in the review later. But we can hear the you know, the difference between their chatter and this super clear and loud walkie-talkie type voice. It's, it's an anomaly that's so bizarre to me. I would say that it's one of my favorite things. 
So before I move into L'Oreal Jail, where I just have one, um, I want you to listen to this. Just for me, back in the day, we used to do boss man. And Jim, I don't know if you remember boss man stuff. So we used to have, instead of little groups, we would have a big group. And we would try to raise the energy of the jail, and I would bring people in one at a time in complete darkness and walk them into the cells. And their job was to give me hell as Big Boss Man the guard. And the more they gave me hell, and that could be swearing to me, yelling at me, whatever they wanted is to raise the energy in the jail, I would put them in a scary place by themselves. So if they gave me a hard time, I would move them to solitary or another scary place. So in this video, I moved somebody into the women's cell block alone away from everyone else near the hall and I, there was a camera in there and i told and they sat in there and they were just quiet and then all of a sudden they got this creepy whispery hello which they didn't hear but it's on the audio and this one is like horrifying to me it is <laughs> That's so you see, you see just the way it's set? Hello. It's just that, that creepy, like, uh, you know, and, and, and the guy I put in there is, is literally scared shitless. He's sitting there, you know, because I just moved him there because he gave me hell, and he knows if you give me hell, I put you in a place by yourself in the dark. Did he hear the voice at the time? No. Oh. That, huh. he, he sat in that cell block completely silent for, I think I had him in there like eight minutes. Did not make a peep. It it sounds like the voice of someone you don't want to meet in a dark alley, you know? Cornwall is like the it spot. So if you want to come out to a public investigation and you want a place that has more of a dark, disturbing history, that's the site you want to come to. I mean, I, I, don't, I won't get into some experiences that people have had there or some certain EVPs that we have captured, which we cannot publicly put out there. But, I mean, if you want something scary, that's that's the place to come to. So, I'm going to find you one from L'Oreal Jail. Just know we don't have too much time, but we should host it. And, and while he's looking at that, I mean, a good point is that if somebody, if you are, you know, if you, you've been a guest and you're reviewing your footage, um, it's really highly recommended you use a really good headset, you know, noise-canceling headset, because that's where you'll pick up a lot of the stuff um, that you wouldn't normally hear with like a cheap headset or just listening to it on your, your laptop speakers or what have you. Interesting. You know, it's, it's kind of, the time, and Elliot, I think mentioned that beginning kind of the impression that TV gives us that like in, you'll get instantaneous things happening, very obvious, but, you know, talking with, with you both tonight, some of the really amazing EVPs are only discovered later after the fact. So, you know, there is some work involved in being a paranormal investigator, it's not just hanging out in a haunted place in the dark, which undoubtedly is fun and awesome. But there is some work that has to go into working on your craft and you know your skills and finding these little these little hidden gems. Well, this is why the review groups are so great because we can see what people are commenting and what they're finding and respond and support them in their review process. But a lot of people come out to just have the experience of investigating. And that's completely fine. And we tell them, you should go to the review group to have some wine and have some laughs and watch your footage with your friends and family. Or some diehards will go put on the headphones, get the pad and paper out, and really start listening for that evidence. And, and whatever you do is completely fine. So there's no, no judgment. People just want that bucket list experience, and some people want to get seriously into it and really get into the paranormal field. And this is a good opportunity for that. I've lined up uh, two good ones here. That, so here's one, the I can't breathe. So a public investigator captured this, um, I think, after he was feeling winded. And where are we for this? L'Oreal Jail. So this is the oldest jail in Ontario, built in 1825, the site of five executions. So it's right before Hawkesbury, I guess you can say, in between Ottawa and Montreal, right along the Ottawa River. Yeah, 
you can definitely hear something. You can hear that whisper again. It's not, it doesn't sound like random noise or someone's shoe scraping on, you know, something that's easily explainable. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if you can hear this one. Come in here. Very clear. Yeah, so here you have a group of French women who are only speaking French during the entire investigation, and then you get this English voice come in here. So this female English voice could point to two of the entities at Lorraine Out Jail. It could be Anne Lett, who was a lunatic who took her own life with a string at the jail. She was English. Or Petite Ruth, who was the governor's daughter, who lived there and died there and followed the governor around. She was she was small. She was a, some sort of dwarfism. And she's always trying to get us to go into the courtrooms through her EVP. So those are the two suspects. Um, but if it is Petite Ruth and those women were speaking French, she would have spoke French because she was French. And Let, on the other hand, wasn't. So I think that may have been Anne Let. But what I love about, you know, L'Oreal Jail is that we get a lot of the French community, which is great. It is a French jail. And if you're speaking full-on French and you get an English EVP, you know, that's more credible. Whereas the other way around, if you are English-speaking and you don't speak French and you get a French EVP, then that's very interesting as well. So that's why I like this jail for evidence, because you kind of have that contrast. And also you wonder if... You know, people asking questions in French will elicit different responses. Uh, you know, then the English speakers, how that will change the dynamic uh, of the responses as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's really fascinating. And for people uh, who asked about, can we get touched by a ghost? Sure. I'm getting touched in here. Let me out. Something's touching me. What's touching you? My car. I don't know. So. There's just some firsthand experience of somebody being touched by a ghost. Is it, is, is it psychological? I don't know. People have these experiences. So far, it's been nothing too crazy. You know, you'll feel a tug at your pants or your shirt or just uh, it happens. It's all part of the paranormal. These have been amazing, amazing clips. Very interesting. And I can see why the events are, are so popular because this sounds like so much fun just to, to do and to experiment, even if you don't know, you know, all the answers, it, the questions that open up are, are pretty amazing. And I kind of like to ask both of you a question, given all of your experience doing this, the number of people you've seen, all the footage, all the evidence. You know, there's a question we used to ask our new tour guides as part of the interview process, uh, which is a simple question. Do you believe in ghosts? How would you answer that question after your time with Phantoms of Yore? Corey, we can go to you first. After everything you've seen and, and heard, what do you make of all this phenomena? Do you believe in ghosts? Well, I mean, I, I started, uh, you know, the first event with, with Phantoms of Yore as a skeptic. And, uh, you know, over the years, well, not even, it didn't even take that long, I've quickly became a believer uh there's I, i'm a very logical person and the first thing i'll do is try to try to prove you know try to find an explanation for what just happened but there, there's so much that you know i've seen and felt and and heard uh, personally that uh that there's no way I, I i i can explain it so you know that's yes i believe in ghosts Elliot, what about you? I think I always have since I was born. You know, just and I know it's there, but you know, just because I believe doesn't mean you have to believe. You know, we all look for that personal experience that makes us a believer. And it's not about proving it in audio or on video. These are just documentations of our experiences. You know, come out to a public investigation, go in the dark by yourself, try a solo challenge. You know, see what you can experience, and then maybe you'll get that experience that makes you a believer. Um, it's all experience based for us. It's not about proving these existence of ghosts, these audio visuals, all that stuff. I mean, it's all up to someone's interpretation. 
you know, it's just nothing will prove that ghosts exist, but an experience will prove to yourself. Yeah, we, we, we tell them that we're not trying to prove anything. You're you're gonna you're gonna take away from this what you take away from it. Um and and it's really up to you to to be open to it or or not. And 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 you know, we've had a lot of skeptics walk in and and walk out in a little with a little different look on their face than when they first came in. Uh so yeah, that's I mean, that's enjoyable in its own seeing seeing the, the change and the the experiences that people have yeah oh yeah tons of people tons of people i think we even have it in our review somebody saying that i went there a skeptic yeah. and now i'm not elliot i understand uh, phantoms are about to embark on a bit of a, a haunted road trip to the u.s can you share with us where you're going and a little bit about the dark history of those sites yeah so i mean once a year we like to plan out a little uh, u.s trip so uh, I think our first year we did our U.S. trip. We did Rolling Hills, the Willis Gatz Murder House, and the Chicago Plaza, uh, the Room 411, I believe, where Stephen King was influenced for his book, 1408. You know, it was cool. It, it, it was great. And then the following year we did, you know, the um, Shanley Hotel, and we did the Conjuring House, and that was good. And this year we are doing the Hinsdale House and uh, the Wildwood Sanitarium, um, in western New York State. Now, these are two well-known sites, a lot of history. The Hinsdale House, you know, is known for the dandy poltergeist or haunting where the house needed an exorcism. Um, there's a lot of conflicting historical information about this, whether or not a murder occurred in the woods or there was a, you know, indigenous massacre that uh, you know, occurred there, or a woman was hung in the trees outside. There's a lot of stories. It will be interesting, you know, a house that needed an exorcism. So, of course, some a family did experience things there, and we'll go there and we'll sleep there. Well, I think Corey and Josh will be sleeping there. Eric and I will be sleeping at the sanatorium. So, we booked both both of the sites for one night, so we can split up. So there's only two of us at each site, and that way. You know, it's more quiet. It's 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 just. I think it'll be a better experience. And then halfway through, we'll rotate and switch spots, um, and then maybe come together at, at the end of the night. And the Wildwood Sanatorium is just you know what it is. It's it's, it's a tuberculosis sanatorium. They did um, electroshock baths there. They did some weird treatments there and stuff like that. And of course, people passed away there. Supposedly, I mean, I haven't seen anything negative about the Hinsdale House yet. But people who have investigated it, it seems like people all kind of walk away um, with some sort of experience. And the Wildwood Sanatorium, I think, is known for you can't put a mirror up or it's going to break or something. So I think we'll have to find a mirror to bring with us. Yeah, there's, there's, there's this theory that, that there's something, uh, they don't like mirrors or whatever. And if you lay in a mirror, or like mirrors will fall off the walls or even mirrors leaned up against the wall will be smashed. And Let's bring some mirrors. I mean, th th this is more just uh, you know a way for us to enjoy ourselves before the season ahead, and and we want to explore sites. And people always ask us, you know, how is the country and house? How is Phyllis Ashburger House? And I gotta tell you, our Canadian sites are way more active than these American sites yeah. in terms of what we experience there. So so far, you know, nothing extremely significant. I mean, uh, you know, Eric was called a mother effer while he was sleeping at the Conjuring House, and that's on our YouTube if you want to go listen to it, but it's not something I think we can play on this forum. But yeah, there's some interesting stuff, but in, ter in terms of consistent activity, maybe it's just the spirits of the sites here know us already, so we kind of, you know, they're comfortable with us, and, and, and they do things for us, you know. Whereas, you know, coming to this one American site for one night, you know, we don't get all that much. But it's always interesting. I love history, so it'll be interesting to go out there and see uh, see the sanitarium and see the old dandy poltergeist house and, and see how that is. Well, I think we're going to be very eager to hear how, how the trip goes and if the mirror breaks or whatever other oddness is afoot. Would you be willing to come back and say, you know, about a month or so? And maybe we could also then talk about the upcoming season. As I know, people are, as I mentioned earlier, are already asking us for the next dates. Um, so can we have you back in about a month to kind of go over what has occurred and what is to come? For sure. 100%. Well, Aiden and Corey, it's been fantastic to have you 
on the show with us today. It's fantastic to work with you as our official investigation partners. And it's just really interesting work uh, that you're doing. And we're so happy that you're able to bring this to so many people because there is something really worthwhile about these experiences and having the opportunity to do it in a real professional way, a non-rushed way, which I think is what you excel at. So thanks so much. And we'll look forward to talking with you when you return. Oh, well, thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Happy. A big thank you to Elliot and Corey for joining us to talk about their work with Phantoms of Yore. Some of those EVPs were really quite bizarre. In the episode, we focused on the audio anomalies they captured, but they also have lots of strange incidents caught on video as well. And to see those, follow Phantoms of Yore on YouTube at The Phantoms of Yore or Facebook and Instagram at Phantoms of Yore. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Haunted Walk for investigation announcements and special events. As always, thank you to our hardworking Haunted Talks team, including Michelle Dennis, our outstanding audio editor. For information on our ghost tours or online paranormal adventures, please visit our website, hauntedwalk.com. Until we meet again, thank you for joining us, and sweet dreams. Thank you.